It's in a simpler manner. But I mean, if I go in a complex manner, then it will be difficult for you to understand. So first of all, I will go in a simpler manner. Right? So let us see what is the C-disk. C-disk means clinical data interchange standards consumption. So the name itself is saying like it's a clinical data. It's not the other one, other data. It's a clinical data interchange. What do you mean interchange? Interchanging between like you can interchange right. So like uh, from US FDA to regulatory authorities and from regulatory authorities to CRO industry like that. So uh, to interchange the data or to exchange the data between different companies right or even we call it a modification also, right? like a table to report right. So SDTM to Adam then protocol to case report forms like that. So everywhere we will be using the clinical data I mean uh, some standards right. So that's why we call it a clinical data interchange standards comes out here ok. So this is a non-profit organization. So I will explain this. So when you see this uh, they are providing the standards like end to end foundational and therapeutic area standards. Then education also then you can understand so SDTM, ADAM, ODM, lab like uh, so many uh, standards are there. So you can learn them by education and there is an opportunity also. So if you learn all these things you can work as a trainer also, so it is trainer. Ok, but you should have a good knowledge on the implementation of all these things. Right? Then, then you can educate like uh, the people who are working in the research organizations in the area of the series. Then membership also you can and usually all the CR rules are the members in this organization. So they will take the suggestions okay, and also advises from all the CR rules and based on that they will modify the standards. Okay. Then yeah, this is uh, like all this. Then CDs can the globe, America, Europe, Africa, Asia and Australia. Okay, all these countries they follow. These are the major drug developing countries. Right? So they follow the CDs guidelines and uh, actually who invented this CDs guidelines means all the CRMs companies only. Right? So instead of sending some unstandard uh, formats, you know, instead of sending multiple uh, formats, so it's better you create one uh, unique standards, right? So that's why we created these unique standards and members are around the globe. You can see the Africa. Africa is not a uh, like a drug developing country. So they won't develop the drugs, right? That's why here only one is there. So remaining in India we have multiple places like Hyderabad, Ahmedabad, then Tamil Nadu. Okay. So around the globe there are so many members are there. Even Australia also. Okay, just forget about this site. So I prepared one PowerPoint. Okay. Just see this one. See this submission standards, clinical data interchange and conduct. Then the mission of CDS is to develop and support global platform independent data standards that enable information system interoperability to improve medical research and related areas of healthcare. Right. So it is all about the clinical data. It is not like how to conduct the clinical trial. Right. It is not like how to uh, record the patient. Right. So it's not conduct only. It's all about the data. Only. The vision of CDSC is to develop and support global platform independent data standards. Platform independent means they won't suggest you to use the SAS only. They won't ask you to use the R. Right. They won't ask you to use some Python. So it's a platform independent standards that enable information systems to operate interoperability. Interoperability means we can operate in any environment. That's called interoperability. Okay. To improve medical research and related areas of health. So this is CDSC mission. So this is how it goes. CDISC developed some standards, right? What these are? These are called the data standards, right? So these data standards are free to use. Anyone can use. You can download the standards freely and uh, internationally accepted, okay? And these are, I mean, uh, approved by the complete universal, I mean, universal and international, anyway, that's same thing, right? free to use. And what are these standards? Standard which supports data exchange between different organizations, medical research for the data exchange, right? So when we create the report or when we, when you uh, generated some data, so this data will be sent to the FDA for approval, right? So that is something about the exchange of data between different organizations, different 
regulator authority and the CRO authority. Then where it is? It is a global non not for profit organization. Right? So the main mode of the uh, CDSC is not for profit organization. Then let us assume there is no standardization. Okay, no standardization. So if there is no standardization, for instance, what happens? There are two companies, company A and B. So company A okay, will be writing the adverse event like this, mild, moderate, and severe. They will submit this to the regulator authority. The other company will write the CVIT as a 1, 2, 3. So, assumption as per that company is 1 is the mild, 2 is moderate, and 3 is severe. That's correct. Form. But they are submitting the same information, A and B, to the FDA in this format. See, submit same information in completely different ways to the regulator authority. Then, how the regulator authority will understand like what is 1, what is 2, and what is 3. Right. So, in order to avoid these ambiguity, Okay, so they introduce the standards. See, no standardization of data, for instance, leads to waste of money and resources, increase the chance of error. Okay, then C disk. I mean, what is the? I mean, you can see the roundup, right? So, what is the uh, solution for this? Uh, I mean, uh, submitting the data in different ways to the regulator party. I mean, how to avoid this confusion? Means to eliminate these issues. C disk introduced. Guidelines and requirements okay, that influence the FD and PMD, right? So, PMD also is a regulated authority, okay, uh, but it is not for the US. Uh, what is this PMD? So, PMD is a regulated authority. Second, Japan, right? Um, pharmaceuticals and Medical Devices Agency. Uh, it's in Japan, right? Mm, guidance and Drug Master File System, Japan only, PMD. Okay. Pharmaceutical and Medical Devices. Japan, Japan guidelines. Okay. Pharmaceutical and Medical Devices Agency. So, this, uh, this is, you, you, I mean, United States Food and Drug Administration, right? So, this is the Pharmaceutical and Medical Devices Agency. It's a Japan uh, regulator. Okay. So, even that one also is sub, sub, support and standards for clinical and non-clinical data. So, it is not only clinical data, it is non-clinical data also. What do you mean non-clinical data? Non-clinical data related to the clinical, means pre-clinical. See, clinical means human being, non-clinical means non-human beings, but that is a clinical data. Non-human beings plus all animals and in the laboratories, even that is also considered as a pharmaceutical related. Right? So, they, the series developed some guidelines related to the clinical and the non clinical. Okay. Then, what is the next? Yeah. Then, CD standards help us in acquisition of the data or acquisition of the standards from other organizations. Then, exchange of standards. Okay. Or exchange of the data. Then, submission. So, once you finish your work, you have to submit the data and the reports to the FDA, right? So, for submission also, the CD guidelines will support and for archival also. What do you mean archival? For storing the data. Because once you finish the trial, okay, after submitting to the FDA, you should not destroy the data. So, there is one time period will be there. Maybe 10 years or 20 years or 30 years. So, you have to save the data. So, that is called the data repository. Okay. So, a person will be responsible for the data repository of a particular clinical trial. Usually, the sponsors are responsible for the data repository. Repository means where you save the data. Okay, that is called data repositories. So, that is nothing but the archiving. Archiving is nothing but the storage. So, CD standards help from acquisition of data to until archiving the data, until storing the data. So, in all these levels, there are some standards. Those standards are called the CD standards. Then, how does the CD works? Okay. So, how does CD work? See, there is a research team. Okay, what the research team do? I mean, usually, what is this one? This is all like uh, that they will develop a drug. Who develops this drug? Research team, they will develop that. So, after developing that drug, they will conduct the clinical trial, right? So, after conducting the clinical trial, they collect the data from the patients and they are writing like C by T, K, E, mild, moderate, C. Okay. So, there is a research team, B is there. So, they are conducting the clinical trial and they are uh, I mean, notifying the results in the form of 1, 2, 3. Right? 
so it's a mild moderate severe and it's a one to three severity. So analysis will be easier if standard terms are used in both studies instead of using these, so such as CDS guidelines. Okay. So what the CDS do? The CDS will different kind of analysis of data from existing data set by standardizing the data. I mean, if you follow the series, then what happens? Easily you can understand that how many people suffer from the mild mild symptom, how many diseases suffer from the moderate, and how many suffer from the severe infections, right? So can facilitate interoperable the clinical based database system by ensuring that clinical data record in the same way in the system. Now, that's it. Simple. It's a maintaining the standards, maintaining the same uniqueness in all the organizations, right? With the uniformity in all the organizations. Uniformity. You have to the uniformity. Right. So that's why a clinical SaaS program, if you work for one company for some time, if you go to other company, you won't feel any difference. It will be the same. The work environment will be the same. Nothing. So you won't feel anything new. Because everyone follows the same standards, right? So you are habituated okay, to a particular environment, right? Then you need to again learn the new thing. Because it will be the same. Right? So yeah, then coming to the CD standards, mm, you can see there are four types of uh, I mean, four parts foundational or data content standards, the second one is data exchange standards, third one is therapeutic areas, fourth one is the control terminology. So, what is the foundational? First of all, what is the foundational? In the foundational, again, we have the non clinical and the clinical. So, the first one is the send, send means. Standards for exchange of non clinical data. Okay. SCND means standards for exchange of non clinical data. Right. So, tabulation for animal studies. What is this send? Send is a non clinical mission. So, it comes prior to the clinical trial. Prior to the clinical trial. So, usually we won't be bothering about the send. Those who work uh, in the laboratories or those who work with the animals, right? Animal studies. So, how to collect the data? How to like uh, uh, use what type of variables, like those standards will be maintained by the non clinical, uh, I mean, the people who involved in the non clinical, right. So, just forget about the send. Then, coming to the clinical study, first of all, you have to plan, right. What do you mean by plan? Plan means you have to create a protocol, right. You have to create a protocol. Without protocol, protocol is nothing but how to uh, conduct a clinical trial. Everything will be discussed in the protocol, right. So, protocol is nothing but a plan, master plan. So, to build a protocol also, so as per your own knowledge, you are not supposed to create the protocol. So, there is a particular template to be built for the protocol, right. So, you have to create the protocol as per the template and as per those guidelines only. So, those guidelines are mentioned in the PRM. What is the PRM? Model for planning protocol. Okay. Anyway, I will explain one by one in detail again. Okay. So, there is a PRM model. Okay. Next, what is the second one? Second one is once you create the protocol, then you have to collect the data from the uh, case report forms, right? So, how to collect the data? So, there is one model called the C dash. C dash means it is a model for data collection, how to collect the data. So, usually this C dash will be maintained by CDM people, clinical data management people, because they will be managing the data, right? Data collection will be done by those people. C dash means clinical data acquisition standards harmonization. So, how to acquire the clinical data, right? So, that comes in the C dash. Then later, organizing the data. Once the data is collected, you have to organize the data in a proper way in the form of the data sets. So, data set is nothing but the tabulation. The other name for the data set is the tabulation, okay? So, model for tabulation of study data. So, whatever the study data we have, we have to convert them into the data set, right? So, to convert into the data set, you have to follow some standards. You are not uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, you have, you don't have the, you know, liberty to use your own variable name, right, or your own data set name. So, everything is described in the SGTM guideline, okay. Then, you have to follow that SGTM to convert the collected data into the, like, uh, data sets, right. So, this is for organizing the data. Then, after organizing the data, what you have to do, then you have to analyze the data, right? So, for analysis, Directly, you are not supposed to use the SGTM data sets directly. You have to convert the SGTM data sets into again analysis data sets. Okay. Then the analysis data sets are ready. What the analysis data sets do? They are ready for analysis. The SGTM data sets are not ready for analysis. So, you should not use any SGTM data set to create the report. Okay. 
So use the Adam data set. What the Adam data set do? The Adam data sets are ready data sets for the analysis. That's the reason we call it the Adam data sets. Analysis data set model. Okay. So this is the analysis one. Then after analyzing what you, I mean, after having these Adam data sets, what you do? You will be using these Adam data sets to uh, make the analysis on the Adam data sets and finally you will be generating the reports, right? Those reports will be sent to the FDA. Okay. Then how to send those reports also will be discussed, but that is not in the CDs, right? CD scroll is like uh, in the preclinical, okay, non clinical study, and uh, in the clinical, right from plan to the until creation of the Adam data sets comes under the C disk. Okay. Now, okay, anyway, I will explain again one by one. The first one is the foundational we are talking about, right? So, it includes, okay, it includes, uh, what are there here? It includes models, domains, specifications for data implementation. Okay, the foundation means all these four. Okay, foundation means all these four. So, what it contains? It contains the models, domain specification for data recommendation. Then, mainly they focus on core principles and basis of complete suite of standards for defining the core principles. So, what are all the standards? The core I mean, the complete standards means complete like SCND, PRM, C dash, SDTM, then ADAM. So, these are all the complete standards to. Uh, I mean to relate the to relate the data, right? Data content standards. Then it supports the non-clinical and clinical research also. In clinical research also. Then coming to the foundational data standards, it incorporates different models. One is the N, said means study for exchange of non-clinical data, then protocol implementation model, PRM, clinical data acquisition standards harmonization, then study data evaluation model, and then analysis data model or analysis data set model. So we have five. Five standards then we will be focusing mainly on these two okay, because we are not creating the protocol and we are not like the acquisition I mean acquiring the data right so acquisition it won't comes under the uh, purview of the SAS program so we won't be doing the C dash then only follow the SDTM and Adam guidelines okay. now it's again in detail standard for exchange of non clinical data so, what, what it specifies? Specifies way to collect and present the non clinical data that should be used when submitting standard domains and variables. Non clinical data in consistent format need to be standardized for smooth processing, right? Then send implementation guidance there. Yeah, and this is okay. Uh, I mean, who will explain you the send? There is an implementation guide. We call it as a send IG. Okay, the send IG will explain you. Okay. I mean everything, all the domains, variables, everything is mentioned in the implementation guide. Okay, so this implementation guide is almost equal to the SDTM implementation guide only. But in the SEN, we talk about the non-clinical data, but in the SDTM, we talk about the clinical data. Got it? It looks same. It's a non-clinical, it's a clinical. Okay. Then coming to the protocol representation model. So what's the protocol representation model? It provides standards for planning and designing a clinical trial protocol with focus on study characteristics okay, and requirements from clinical trials are GOV, World Health Organization, registries and what is this? Udra City registries, okay, European uh, clinical trial registries are there. Right? So, I mean, what is the protocol? You know, right? This is a uh, this is a planning and we design right the study in the form of the protocol. So this PRM standards will explain like what type of standards you have to keep in the protocol and what type of design you have to made. Everything will be described in the protocol. Then this protocol representation model assists in automation, I mean automating the CRF creation, VHR configuration. Okay, VHR means electronic health records, okay, and case report from creation. So this is very easy. When you use this uh, PRM protocol representation model, so using this PRM, you can easily create the case report forms as well as health record. Uh, also, you can mm, maintain. Okay, so uh, got it. So if you are not following this protocol guideline and protocol representation model, then from this protocol, extracting the information to create the case report forms is really difficult. Okay, it will take a lot of time for the senior people. 
but if you prepare as per this uh, PRM, pro I mean protocol representation model, then it will be easy for you to create the case report from an electronic health records. Okay. Then this PRM captures information in protocol. Okay. Data can be used throughout all stages of the study. Means after creating this protocol only, what happens? It, it contains the information. Got it? Like how to collect the data, captures information protocol. Data means simple. There are two things. One is data management plan, the other one is the statistical analysis plan. These two are derived from the protocol only. Right. So this protocol helps us to get the data. Okay, I mean how to get the data from the patient and also will make us uh, to create a statistical analysis plan also. That's why two things will be derived from the protocol: data management plan and statistical analysis plan. Okay, then those will those the data will be used throughout all the stages of study. Then we discuss this CDASH also. CDASH means clinical data acquisition standards harmonization. So, with the help of control terminology, okay, so defines naming conventions for the clinical database. So, I will explain what this is. First, let us see. Focuses on data collection because acquisition is collecting the data only. Right? Mainly, it focuses on collecting the data does not focus on data reporting because it is just collecting the data we are not going to submit any type of report here right so does not focus on reporting then defines way of question formulation present standard way to collect data in a similar way across studies and sponsors right so what happens here see when a patient comes so there is a questionnaire right there is a questionnaire what is your name what is your age right where are you from what is your weight what is your you know height okay what is, what is the ethnicity right? like that so from questionnaires you are collecting the information right and from physical examination you are collecting some information right and uh, taking his uh, history you are collecting some information right so there are di diff i mean different ways to collect the data right so when you want to acquire the data then there is a methodology to acquire the data from the patient right what are drugs given to the patient so that is a uh, exposure related uh, uh, information right then uh, you like uh, uh, ask the patient to undergo some tests like ECG lab then you are collecting the ECG results and the lab results also and basing in a database right so like the collect data collection methods are different ways are there, right? so all those things you will be mentioning here in the C dash, C dash defense way of collect, collect I mean, question formulation standard way to collect data in a similar way across studies and sponsors so that data collection formats and structures are there then provide clear traceable of submission data into sdtm which further provides more transparency to data viewer okay so if you are reviewing the data for example while reviewing the data so uh, for example there is no such column called the uh, patient uh, location Okay, so whenever you are reviewing the data, you find one location, location of the patient that has not been defined in the protocol or in the collection forms. Then the data reviewer will be in the confusion like where this data came from because in the protocol it's not, it's not there. There is no need of collecting their race or ethnicity. Then how it came here? Okay, so uh, from Collection to until converting this collected data to the SDTM data sets, there should be a traceability. What do you mean by traceability? Traceability means here if you have a new uh, column or new observation, yes, you should trace it where it came from, means you should trace it. Then it will show that where it is coming from. Otherwise, you know, some people will do the data manipulation. Data manipulation means you need the result, right? So they they won't do any, I mean they will do something. Finally, they will be submitting the result, which is not appropriate, and that result uh, I mean they will give some column, but they won't give the traceability. Traceability means they won't tell like where that answer came from. Okay, so where that uh, uh, data came from. Okay, so for every even in the Adam also, mainly the purpose of Adam is showing the traceability. Right, if you are giving something is you should know. Uh, the source of that uh, data, I mean, where it came from, 
okay if you are submitting something means it should be traceable what is so that is called a traceability so after collecting the data in some case report from formats okay we have to provide the clear traceability of submission data into sdtm got it then what is this control terminal in clinical database see whenever you are collecting the data okay usually we call it is a uh, data acquisition right? while acquiring the data so with the help of control terminology with the help of control terminal terminal you see there is one terminology okay so what is the terminology uh, means some standard terms are there see for example we call it a fever right uh, some people they call it is a pyrexia some people they call like elevated body temperature and some people they call it like different uh, terminology they will use right so instead of using that uh, terminology so there is a control terminology will be there so who developed this control terminology means the series they developed the control terminology right so whatever the terms you are using so those should be there in the control terminology just now we saw like uh, adverse event mild moderate and severe right those terminology mild moderate and severe they taken from the uh, cd disk standards only okay so with the help of this control terminology okay you are creating the clinical database okay then next is the study data tabulation what do you mean by study data tabulation model just now we discussed tabulation is nothing but the data set so whatever the data we collected okay initially in the form of the like uh, excel maybe oracle maybe other some standard data sources or may not be standard data source maybe non standard data sources so those you are converting into the sdtm data sets right so describes the structure of data so it should have a particular structure got it means if you have one data set means for example demographic data set is there it should contain only the demographic related data set data information means it should have a structure okay in order to streamline for analysis and reporting process okay then this is a submission data standard into which raw data study are mapped and collated got it means uh, simply we are not using this sdtm data sets to convert into adam data sets right but we have to submit the sdtm data sets also to the fda that's why it comes under the submission data standard means for every clinical trial okay you have to submit the sdtm data sets you need not to submit the uh, scnd you need not to submit the c dash okay but we have to submit the sdtm data sets to the fda that is mandatory okay you want to see how the sdtm data sets looks like yes sir uh, see the my d drive sdtm data sets related to one study okay this is the sdtm data sets we are submitting okay yeah see now ae cm so we have to submit them in the form of xpt files only these are data sets only but we converted them into xpt file each data set we converted into one xpt file okay and can you see the data set name is only two letters dm ds ex ie fp okay ae right tv vs then some supplementary databases also there supplementary data sets so see sub cm sub ds sub ex sub lb remaining all two letters only except the supplementary data sets remaining are all having the two letter two letter name only right now yeah this folder you have to submit as it is to the fda okay these folders represent sdtm data sets right then uh, okay we submitted this one then how they know all these things see what is this ae what is this cm how they know means you are sending one define.xml so what is the define.xml means it will give the definition of your all the data sets see for example uh, you take the dm what is dm what are the variables in the dm what is the length of the each and variable what is the name of that variable what is the purpose of that variable so this defend.xml will describe all the data sets and the variables present in the xpt file right i mean in this folder okay let's click on this defend.xml 
okay when you click on it yeah now it open see data sets for study nida cdm so this is one study so for this these are the data sets you are submitting how many data sets are there here now you say, check 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 maybe 23 are there okay now let us see the demographic what is this demographic special purpose one record for event per subject it is a tabulation in data set main keys are study id and unique subject id where it is located dm.xpt just click on it okay just click on it see it is asking you want to open it open now it will take us to that location and it will open in the data set see it open okay see it open dm okay. open it you cannot open because it's in the XPT file yet, right? So you have to copy into the work library. Copy and paste into the work library. Okay, then only you can see. Okay. So this is the data related to this study. Okay, demographic. Okay, anyway, I will explain this later in detail. Now, what are the variables in this one? Just click on this demographic. Now it will give the information. Demographic data set. These are all the variables present in the demographic. Study ID. It's a study identifier. It's a text. It the originated from the case report form. Directly we took it from the case report form. It's an identifier. I will tell the roles also. We have different roles. Identifier, timing, you know, record qualifier, result qualifier, okay, variable qualifier, synonym qualifier, like this. I will explain this later. So, like these are all the variables present in the demographic. Okay. Then this is called the traceability like way okay for example where this study identifier came from how you collected the data so you want to see the case report form right now you see below here annotated case report form is there just click on it okay now it is taking to the case report form in the case report form which one demographic go to the demographic form so in the demographic form only we made this annotation study id so whatever entered here in this uh, case report form that we took and see study id unique subject id domain dm and subject characteristics also dm dm dtc sc dtc like that you see here go back yeah study id domain new subject id visit visit number subject id like this okay, all these variables are i mean while acquiring the data by data standards acquisition uh, standards is there right I mean, uh, c dash okay so using the c dash standards the data from the case reports were collected and added into somewhere maybe some other location in the form of excel or access that we converted converted to the sdtm clear so this is the i mean like these are all the sdtm data sets so we made a uh, definition got it so this is the submission standard when you want to submit the SDTM, then you have to follow the standards. So, what we are submitting to the FDA, the first thing we are submitting is the SDTM data sets in a form of folder. It should contain the Defender.xml, it should contain the case report forms. Okay. So, yeah, that is one folder we are submitting. I will explain how to create that folder also. Then, study data tabulation model is a submission data standard into which raw data. Um, study, raw study data are mapped and converted then ensures clinical data submitted in consistent manner which leads to reduction in review time allows cross study analysis also okay, it will help them to understand easily and there won't be any um, I mean, this ambiguity as well as uh, they don't need to um, I mean search uh, for all the variables search for all the data sets right? if they open the defender text they can find everything there. okay so yeah, this is the SDTM. So we will be learning in detail about the SDTM and the implementation of the SDTM also. Okay. For this SDTM, we have two documents are there. One is the SDTM, second one is the SDTM implementation guide. So the SDTM is for the people like who want to learn SDTM. Just understanding the SDTM is SDTM is enough. But if you want to implement it, then you have to learn the SDTM IG. Okay. So if you are learning the SDTM IG, no need to go for the SDTM because SDTM IG contains the entire information present in the SDTM also, right? So we'll go through the SDTM IG. 
that is enough okay so that will take more time for HDB amount I think uh, for us it will take almost 10 classes okay uh, yeah then this is the HDB then coming to the next Adam so what is an Adam Adam means uh, see already we collected the data we kept the data in an organized manner like demography, concomitant mitigation, adverse event, right? ECG, labs, like that. We organized the data in a proper way. We classified in a perfect manner, right? So that we already done. But in the analysis data set, we have to reconfigure the data, okay? So that is called a post data organization. So what we do as needed for analysis. Got it? See for example, okay, this is very very important thing. You just to try to understand. Uh, there is a data set having adverse events. So what is that adverse event data set called? A. Okay, A means one data set that is related only to the adverse events, or specifically it contains the adverse event information only. That is the A data set. Then there is one more data set called a concomitant mitigation, CM. CM means what are all the medications given to the patient. It comes in the concomitant medication. Right? So that is the other data set. It contains all the medication given to the patient. Now you want to analyze like for which disease, what is the medication given to the patient? Right? You have given a paracetamol. I mean, when, why you did? I mean, why you gave the paracetamol to the patient? Means he suffered from fever. Okay. The fever is not present in this concomitant medication, right? The fever is present in the adverse event. So, to make the analysis, you have to combine the adverse event data set and concomitant medication data set together, right? Combine it. It means collect the required variables from the and from the ADAM data set, I mean from the AE data set and also from the concomitant data set and you create one intermediate data set. So, what is that intermediate data set? The intermediate data set contains the required information to create your report. Okay. So that information we got it, we got from the adverse event data set as well as from the concomitant medication data set. So this intermediate data set is called the ADAM data set. So using the ADAM data set, you are going to create a report like what adverse event happened and what's the medication given to subset that adverse event. Got it. So that is how you are creating the report. So that's why reconfiguring we are doing. Reconfiguring the data and post data organization as needed for analysis. Right. So what this analysis data model do? Ensure that data is correctly transferred, okay, and replicated and traced. I told you, right? Traceable is very important. Okay. So whenever you are creating analysis data set means the variable present in the analysis data set that must be traceable means that should come from the case report form or that is derived or whether it is there in the LTTM or not. So they sh you should ma maintain that traceability, you should show the traceability, right. Then transferred data to data, then replicated, traced along whole data processing, got it. So this is the analysis data model. Then coming to the second part, so what is the second part? data exchange standards data exchange standards means once you finish your like your work everything then you have to submit your data to the FTU that comes from the data exchange just now I have shown you this defendant XML right defendant XML what is this defendant XML you are defining all the data sets related to SDGM in the form of the defendant XML and you are sending it to the FDA right so what this defendant XML do it contains the data exchange standards, right? In the same way, data set XML. What is this data set XML? This is for the SDT, I mean, one is for the SDTM, one is for ADAM, okay? And this ODM is, I mean, maybe C dash, okay? Then resource description, resource description framework, like this. So these, I mean, anyway, we are not bothering about all these things. These will be sent by the regulatory authority. The regulatory authority, I mean, say regulatory, uh, affairs team will be there. There is a separate like, team, regulatory affairs team will be there. So those team will be sending these to the FDA. Got it. But here, uh, defend XML also you are not going to create. But if you have a software, there, there is separate software for creating a dependent XML, then you can create. Right. Then 
uh, we'll be creating the CRT DDS also. CRT DDS means case report tabulation data definition specification. Means what are all the data sets you are defining or we are creating, you define it. Okay, and send it to the FDA. That's the form of the PDF, PDF format we will be sending, right? But I think now nobody is sending the PDF format, only dependent XML we are sending, right? So that there is a dependent XML for SDDM and there is one dependent XML for the Adam also, right? So these two are important. Okay. Now and this is the same thing again. Okay, data standards facilitate sharing of structured data across different information systems. Then flexibility be used by information system which have not implemented foundational standards. For example, academic studies. Okay. Then optimize it to represent the CDS content. Then CDS use the XML standard for data action supported by the industry related specifications. That is for the data action purpose, right? Exchange means simply you should not provide your data to them so that they can't understand. So you have to give the definitions. The definition means that comes from the define only. So how you send the define? There is a XML format. You have to be submitting in the XML format only. Okay. So that XML standard for data exchange. Then yeah. Then the other one is the third one and fourth one. Third one is therapeutic areas. Even the CDS calls so they develop some guidelines, right? Those who are working in the oncology, then they develop separate guidelines for the people who work for the oncology related clinical trials. Like this, they develop so many specifications and regulations related to the therapeutic areas. See, therapeutic areas, for example, if you provide guidance on, I mean, therapeutic areas, for example, it provides guidance on data collection and the conduct of trials relevant to COVID-19. So, COVID-19 is a separate one again, right? So, it created a submission I and mean, it created a separate standard for collecting the data for the COVID relevant studies. Right. So, specify foundational standards for different disease areas. We have different uh, areas, therapeutic areas, right? Maybe neurology, nephrology, endocrinology, right? Then uh, hepatology, liver related, pathology, hematology, and uh, what is that? Parasitology. Then, I mean, there are different therapeutic areas as well. dermatology, gynecology. Okay, different therapeutic areas are there. So, based on that uh, therapeutic area, we developed some guidelines. So, those guidelines will be utilized if you work in that particular therapeutic area. Then, already we discussed this one. The control terminology is nothing but the terminology given by the C disk. Right? So, control terminology is, uh, I mean, in the form of data set, also you can see, okay, which contain list of terms that should be used with. CD standards to ensure that data is collected and recorded consistently. Okay, so this is the fourth one. Finally, standardization of clinical data improves overall process of drug development during timelines and costs. Okay, sorry, okay. anyway, this is the correct one, right? Standardization of the clinical data improves the overall process of drug development. Then, proper implementation of CD standards can decrease timelines and costs also, right? It will save a lot of time and money also during overall process of development, right? Then again, this is the same thing. Okay, application or interface will see the standards. Just now we discussed foundational standards are for planning. So here I deleted that uh, non-clinical. Okay, non-clinical. Here it is there. Okay, because I told you right, this non-clinical and it's a HDM is a clinical. It's analogous. They look same actually. That's why we call this a data tabulation. Tabulation means both are data sets only, but it's contains a non clinical information, this is a clinical information. So, in the planning, protocol, study design, data collection, C dash and lab also, lab standards also there for collecting the data from the laboratories, then SDTM, ADAM. Then for data action, as I told you, defend at XML, SDM XML, ODM. Then semantic. Semantic is nothing but the control terminology, right? Control terminology. Then there is a bridge model, like glossary, shape, there are all the semantic and implementation, therapeutic area we have, questionnaires and healthcare link. Okay, so these are all present in the CDSK uh, website. Now, again the same thing, first protocol will be created, then from the protocol, electronic data capture, you have to do, means you have to build one uh, methodology, like how to uh, collect the data from the case report forms, right? So you are building the case report forms, right? 
and from the case report you are capturing the data and how to capture the data so this comes from the collection phase then after collecting the data you have to store the data and review it review and you make a different attack so like uh, what's the data set which variable it contains what's the length so you have to make the different attack XML. right so this comes on the aggregate so here we are using the control terminology where where we use this control terminology means from here to here we will be using the control terminology that all the terms defined in the series then this is the SDTM. then for analysis purpose we are creating a again adam data set even adam also there is a defendant xml okay and finally we will be using this analysis data sets for creating the reports okay SDTM, adam and the reports so this is how our work goes okay then again the same one but for a clear understanding and explain the thing source data how, how to collect the data i told you right uh, c dash right so c dash means clinical data acquisition standard uh, i mean clinical data acquisition standard harmonization right so c dash so this c dash data in form sent from crgo then there is an operational data model also so operational model also it will explain how to make the operations right during the clinical trials is a model and how to collect the data from the laboratories so that's the lab so this is this is collection only then coming to the database clinical database management system electronic data capture okay. so using this you will be capturing the data and then you are converting the captured data into the see these are the standards right lab standard odm pseudo are the standards then you follow these standards you are collecting the data and storing the data in the form of database right so how you collect the data standards are here but I already told you right, it's a platform independent. So you can use any software, either you can use the electronic data capture software, or you can use metadata, or you can use the RAV metadata also. It's a one uh, electronic data capture technique only. So RAV you can use, or you can use Oracle Clinical, or you can use uh, free sources also that open clinical, it's an open source, you can use that one also, right? Or any clinical data management system you can use to collect the data. But the standards are defined in this C dash, right? Then after the data is ready, then you have to convert them into the HDM data sets and then ADAM data sets. So whatever the data you have collected is related to the non-clinical, then you apply this send in from I mean send uh, standards, I mean standard for exchange of non-clinical data, right? Then once this HDM ADAM is ready, then you have to uh, convert them into the reports like analysis data sets, then case report tabulation data sets, and metadata you need. I will show you how the metadata looks like, then standardized data for submission. So this is submission, then after that you have to submit the reports. So why we follow the standards? Tell me what's the reason for following the standards. 65 to 75 percent submission information is associated with the safety data. Right? A big volume of listings, case report, tabulation is nothing but the data sets. Right? For case report, tabulation, data sets and patient profile etc is always included even in electronic submissions so whenever you are submitting the i mean any data reports to the fda mostly it contains 65 percent to 75 percent of the I mean, data contains the safety information only okay safety information is all related to the adverse event only got it the patient uh, profiles as well as the adverse event data only 30 percent of the programming time is used to generate statistical results with SAS. And the rest of programming time to fertilize the data structure, check data accuracy, tablet list, raw data, and statistical results into certain formats. Right? See, uh, clearly look this one and remember this. Only 30% of the programming is involved in the creation of statistical reports. That's it. Remaining all, remaining, I mean, 30% of the time only here we are consuming for the programming, utilizing for the program. Remaining 70%, what you do? check for the accuracy of the data and getting the familiarity with the data and creating the list uh, tablate okay raw data and conversion of the raw data to hdtm and hdtm to adam right and uh, applying the control terminology uh, validation of the data right so making the traceability all these will take more time but just to writing the program to create the statistical report will take only 30 percent that's it then this non statistical programming time because of CDS uniform data structure and its useful function. So we can reduce the non statistical programming time like checking the data accuracy, right? So 
making the tabulation, fundraising the data. It is taking more time, right? So if you follow the standard, then you can reduce the time. Okay. It will be easy for us if you follow the same standard every time. Then CD submission standard, just now I have shown you. In the CD SDTM, unfolding the core model, that is the basis both for the specialized data, data set terms, optimized medical degree, and CD is prepared like this. Just now I have shown you, right? So we have to submit the SDTM data sets as well as the dependent XML. For, I mean, first submitting, we are doing this one, SDTM data sets. And later, what we do? I mean, along with our uh, non I mean, clinical SDTM, they will be sending the non, non clinical information also. But usually, we won't be involved in the non clinical. So, those people will send the SCM, non clinical information also, like submission. I mean, what is this one? Standard for exchange of non clinical data. So, they follow these standards. Then, before SDTM and after SDTM, what is the difference? See, before SDTM, domains were there. What are the domains? Concomitant medication is domain, physical examination is domain, adverse event is domain, right? Domains were there. But standard domain names were not there. See, they use the adverse. Some people they use the adverse, or some people they use the AE, or some people they use the complete adverse event. So, there is no such standard domain name. But now, we are using the standard domain name as AE. AE means adverse event. Right? So, earlier domains were there, now also domains are there. Standard domain names were not there, but now standard domain names are there. Then standard variables were not there, but now we have the standard variables, right? Unique subject ID, new subject ID only you have to use. Okay. So there is a standard is the one. When after HTM. So before HTM, some people they use the patient name or patient ID or unique subject ID or unique patient ID like that. They use different names. Standard variable names, no. Standard variable names, yes. Okay. Standard variables as well as standard variable name. Name is nothing but the label, right? Then, what is the result? Reviewers had to familiarize themselves with the unique domain names. So, reviewers or those who do the scrutiny or those who do the cross check, they have to get the familiarity with your data, okay, with your names and variables and variable names, right? It's an application. It's a time consuming, okay, and pooling, joining data sets awkward and difficult. We have invert data set, you have given a different variable name. Other data set, you have given different variable name, right? It's very confusing and time taking process. So, for a clinical file, uh, I mean, only for the rechecking or scrutinizing or for reviewing, uh, maybe five, six years also, it will take a lot of uh, communications happen between the, you know, the CRO organization as well as the USA, the regulatory team. Then, good portion of review, time spent cleaning up the data. Then inefficient and error code. But here it is time efficient, minimal, let me come. Standard variables, variable names are immediate, familiar with the data consistency because everything is as per the standard only, right? Then standard domain names, easy to find the data, right? Just a moment, please. Yes, only. Door open. Okay, now let us see this HTM basic basic concepts. Okay, so in the HTM basic concepts, first we should understand the domain. Okay, the domain classes, domain variables, control terminology. And metadata. Then there are the dependent XML. Okay. Shall I show you all this? 
one second. First, let us see the domains. Okay, domains means. Um, I have taken this as GTM data sets, right? Okay, so these are all the domains. Okay, these are all the domains. Domain means each data set related to a specific, uh, you know, um, what you say, specific thing, a demographic is one domain. Okay, this is the domain. So, domain classes. Domain classes means, see, uh, we had different domains, but we classified them into different uh, classes. Okay, adverse event comes under findings. Okay, ECG comes under findings. Laboratory comes under findings. Okay, like that. So we created these domains into different classes that we will be discussing later in detail. Okay, so those are the classes. Then domain variables. Domain variables means this is called a domain. So what are the variables present in each domain? If you check the demography, then it contains the subject ID, domain, the subject ID. You have to follow the same names depending on the issue. Okay. So country means country only. Sex means sex only. You should not use the gender. Okay. So subject ID, subject ID. You should not use the patient ID. Got it. So as defined in the SDT implementation guide, you have to follow the same variables only. So those are called the Domain variables. Then control terminologies. So what's the control terminology? Here, for example, you see the race. Okay, click on it. So when it comes to the race, you should use only this terminology. American Indian or Alaskan Native, Asian, Black or African American or Negro, multiple others. That's it. Okay, when it comes to the sex, okay. When it comes to the sex, what should you do? You should use FMU. FM means F is a female, M is a male, M is a no. That's it. We have to use only these three. That's it. You are done. You should not use the other things. Okay. Got it. So you should use only these three. F and you only should use. Okay. F means female. M means male. M is a no. Okay. So this is called the control terminology. The control terminology also you should understand. Then what is the other one? Okay, let's see this. Metadata. Metadata is nothing but the defender XML. What's the defender XML? Just now has shown you, right? So it's the metadata. Metadata is nothing but the data about the data. So it is some uh, intermediate information. So using this intermediate information, then you can find the information from the actual data sets. Right. So this is just giving you information about the actual data, right? So this is called the metadata. So in the SDTM, okay. You have to understand basic concepts. Here are the basic concepts. So anyway, we will discuss again the series based on fundamental model. Just now we discussed right there are different models. I mean, uh, sorry, classes, general classes, interventions, findings, and events. Okay. So each class contains different domains again. Okay, like this: CM, Congregate Medication, Exposure, EG, okay, IE, LB. P, A, V, S, L, Okay. So these are all the domains and these are the different classes. Okay. Then here, while understanding the classes, we should understand these things also. Generic structure is there. You know, if there is one observation, okay, any tagging pair will be there in that observation topic variable will be there, tagging variable will be there, qualified are there. Okay, I will explain this. And these are the different domains. In the interventions we have the Contemporary medication, exposure, and substance use, and the events, adverse event, disposition, medical history, deviation, clinical events, and then the findings, ECG, inclusion, exclusion criteria, labs, clinical examination, pharmacokinetic uh, concentration, CK, then micro, microbial MD, okay, questionnaires, so the, these are findings, and these are the special purpose uh, domains also there. Right? Demographic comments, subject elements, subject disease, sub, um, supplemental. Uh, qualifier, qualifiers, then uh, relative records, trial design models are there, five trial design models are there. Okay. Anyway, I will explain all these things while explaining the HGT. Okay. So, tomorrow, what we will do, we will start the HGT. Then, I mean, uh, in, again, in the same HGT, what are all the like uh, classes are there? Okay. So, this is how it looks like, 
there is an implementation guide so the, in the implementation guide i will be explaining the complete uh, sdtm okay after that again we will go through this uh, power point so that you can understand it more comfortably okay it's all like sdtm right so half of this is sdtm yeah then how to collect the data how the um, case report forms looks like okay then advantage of the metadata control terminology annotations so it's all sdtm this complete uh, pdf uh, powerpoint is sdtm okay so i hope we'll finish uh, the sdtm in two days okay then means only the implementation guide i am talking about not practically so theoretical things we will do in two more classes Mm.